Hey, good evening everybody. I figured that this was a pretty quick tutorial to do, so I figured I'd just steamboat through tutorial number eight and yeah, it'll be great. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to do some very simple alpha blending. So this shouldn't be too shabby at all. The first step I took was to go onto the Nehe website and just grab their um, texture here. It's called glass, it's a bitmap file. And I just loaded it up to make sure that I had something that looks similar to their tutorials. You could really continue to use the crate one if you wanted, or you could use any other texture you would like. But the glass one's kind of nice because it kind of looks like stained glass, which would be something you'd expect to be transparent. So there are a few steps to actually get this up and running. Uh, the first step is that we're going to have to enable alpha blending, and we're going to have to provide some sort of information about how that alpha blending occurs. So you can see I've actually just pulled OpenGL tutorial number seven off of GitHub right now and into this new project called OpenGL tutorial number eight. Unfortunately, number seven hasn't been well commented yet, so there aren't a lot of comments in here, but I'll take care of that at some future point. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and change this crate texture here to actually uh, be a glass texture. So let's go and just refactor this really quick, quick and tell it to be glass texture. And we'll call this glass.bmp. All right, so that, that's a pretty simple trick. We've now got it all running with some glass here. The next trick will be actually enabling alpha blending. So we can do that by going here and saying that we want to enable blending. Blend. And we have to provide some sort of blend function. Now, there are a ton of options here. I'm just gonna tell you what we're going to use. If you're interested in researching them, there's a ton of different ways these work, but we need some sort of rule to tell OpenGL whether we want to add the colors together or whether we want to take the difference of them or whether we want to take a difference of this alpha value from a value of one and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is our blending factor source is just going to be a source alpha and then our blending factor destination is going to be one minus source alpha. All right. Now the last thing we need to do here in our enable disable blend function sort of stuff is we actually have to disable depth testing. The reason for this is because depth testing will stop any draw calls on any fragments that are behind any objects that have been drawn. Now the thing with transparent objects is that you can have objects behind a transparent object. And so if you have multiple transparent objects, you need to render them in the correct order and make sure that they all get rendered. So we're actually going to disable depth testing. So let's go and modify this a little bit so we're disabling depth testing. All right, so that's all there really is to it for this code. The rest of it is in the fragment shader where down here we've always supplied a, like whatever this texture 2D is. We need to modify that a bit so that we're actually just have some sort of static alpha value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a vector with lighting times my texture 2D of texture and my UV coordinate and I'm going to set an alpha value of 0.5. So every fragment that gets drawn will only have an alpha value of half. All right, I think that's really it. Uh, we can go and load this up and you should be able to see immediately that there is some sort of blending occurring. You can actually see the quads through this glass that are being drawn. Now there are a few little issues with the brightness of things due to the draw ordering. The only way to fix that is to actually order your transparent objects. So what you'd want to do is you'll want to order the transparent objects from back to front and draw them from back to front. But since this is one object, we can't really do that. Uh, we'll just have to live with it. Now what would be cool is to turn this blending on and off. So why don't we do that? Uh, that's pretty simple to add in here. I'm going to go and add a new rule for blending. Let me just see what I actually called it in here. I called it alpha. So let's try alpha equals true. All right, and then depending on whether or not, let's see, what do, what do I use? I used B in my tutorial. So whenever B is pressed, I'm going to switch blending on and off. So let's say that if T is equal to B, what we'll do is we'll say alpha is equal to the inverse of alpha. And if alpha, what we'll do is we'll enable blending and we'll make sure to disable depth testing gl.disable, enable cap, depth test. All right, now if alpha is not enabled, we have to do the exact opposite. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that in here. I'll disable here and enable depth testing. All right, so now we've 
got our guy here that we can auto rotate. Now we can press B to actually enable and disable blending. And then we also have L for lighting and so on. So you can see what it looks like with lighting enabled and without lighting enabled. Oh, sorry. With lighting enabled and without lighting enabled. There we go. All right, so that's all there is to it for this tutorial. Pretty short and sweet. Uh, basically, all we had to do was go and put in some sort of constant alpha value here. Make sure that we enabled blending and that we disabled depth testing. And just to show you what it looks like with depth testing enabled, let's just run the program really quick. You'll notice that you can't actually see any of the quads that should be back here being drawn. And that's because this face here was in front of those faces. It got drawn first and so there was no draw calls to the other face there. Now, how come this face is visible down here? Well, that's because it actually got drawn before this front face. So it got drawn, wrote its values to the depth buffer. And then when this face came along, overwrote those values in the depth buffer, it still could be blended properly because this face already existed. However, this left face never got a chance to be drawn because it failed depth tests. So if we rotate around, you'll see all of a sudden it's visible. And then once again, with depth test disabled, that's not an issue anymore. You can see that it went and drew that face, even though its depth value was behind this face's depth value. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was interesting, and as always, 